Hi, I'm Christine. Calm, relaxing, serene. Those words perfectly describe the beautiful beach scene that I've got for our project today. So get your watercolors, your paper, and your brushes, and let's start painting. So the first thing we gotta do is tape our paper down. This will help the paper not warp and buckle so much while we're putting water on it, and it'll help it dry flat when we're finished painting. Now, we're gonna draw from these reference photos. You can take screenshots if you want to. They're, they're my pictures that I took, so I'm allowed to tell you, you can copy them. Um, we're gonna start with just drawing a horizon line and then we're gonna draw, uh, we're gonna position the little lifeguard hut, and that's basically just a little rectangle sitting on a platform. And you don't need to draw a whole lot of lines, just some basic ones uh, to help you position things when you're painting, because you really wanna put all the details in that you can with your paintbrush. So go ahead and put just the, the very basic drawing of the lifeguard hut on there along with the horizon line and I've positioned the platform right at the horizon line uh, where the water is meeting the sky because that's how it is in my reference photo and that's going to make it easy to paint. Um, then I'm going to put in a couple, well three lines for trees and these lines can be a little bit harder. You don't want to draw, um, press hard with the pencil on the other things, but for the trees it won't matter so much because we're going to paint them with dark trunks and that paint will cover up those pencil lines there. Now, uh, we want to get the sky area completely wet and I want it really good and wet so that it soaks into the paper and gets the paper wet enough that it'll stay wet for a little while while I'm working on it. Um, so you can spray it with a spray bottle but I like to use my paintbrush. Um, I just feel like it does a better job and you want to make sure and spread that water all around and cover every bit of the surface of the sky. Although don't get the uh, lifeguard shack wet. You don't want uh, the blue paint to run into where we're going to paint the lifeguard hut um, yellow. I don't know whether to call it a shack or a hut. Um, it's one of those. It's not a tower. At least I don't think it is. It's way too short. Um, anyway, uh, get your paper all wet and then we're going to go into some blues over here. I have cerulean and cobalt together in one little spot and I'm just going to throw that here in this puddle where I've already got some other blues in there and then I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue because I want a, a nice kind of dark color near the top of the sky and I'm just going to pick that paint up and spread it all over the top into where it's wet there and then I'm going to go back and get some more of the cerulean and cobalt and then I'm going to add some cobalt turquoise to that and put that in there and then I'll just be getting my paintbrush wet with water and um, putting the uh, paint that's already in my brush and on the paper I'll just uh, spread that out by adding more water and that way the sky gets a little bit lighter as it gets down closer to the horizon and I think that's too light so I'm gonna get some more cobalt turquoise and put that in there it's really pretty Florida color and it'll look nice in the sky right there remember that your paints dry lighter than they look when they're wet so um, don't get them too light or you won't be able to see them now I'm going to get some uh, pinky lavender color and add that into the middle because I'm going to be putting uh, some clouds across there and uh, I want to, the, the, the lavender color will help make the uh, clouds stand out more. So I just put a little bit of pink into that violet that I had on my palette up there 
and while this is still good and wet, I'm gonna uh, stroke some uh, lavender in there. You don't want a sloppy wet paintbrush when you do that or you'll get cauliflowers and hard edges. Now this that I'm doing right here is I'm uh, showing you how some people use their brush wet with water to pull out paint where they want the clouds to go. I don't particularly care to do it that way. I've been using the paper towel for years and years and that's what I'm comfortable with so that's how I'll do it. But you can use whichever method works better for you, whichever one you're comfortable with and get the results that you like best. Um, but that's, that's what I'm doing there is just blotting the, some of the paint back up onto this dry paper towel. Now I'm going to take some more of that purpley lavender and mix that into my blue and make a blue-gray color to put the shadow on the underneath side of those clouds. I'm going for a big fluffy cotton ball like clouds just kind of rolling across the sky there just above the horizon and so I'm uh, putting this gray blue color on and then uh, dip my rinse my brush and uh, use it to soften that edge um, you should really only soften the top edge I did a little bit on the bottom there and probably shouldn't have um, and I'm gonna add a little bit more in because I want to have enough definition that it looks good. And I'm just going to keep adding more until I think I've got the clouds looking like I want them to look. And I see that I dropped some water on the top of my sky up there so I'll have to fix that. But the paper needs to dry uh, so at least mostly dry before I can do anything with that to fix it. Um, the spot that I'm talking about, uh, I just dropped a little drip of water and it landed on my picture right there and has made a cauliflower. Um, now I have to let that dry, like I said, and then I can fix it. So while that's drying, on, let me just mop up a little bit of extra water here and, and mop that water. Uh, but I don't want to do that too much because it does lift the paint up. Mostly I want to leave it alone while it dries. Now I'm going to, while I wait for that to dry, I'm going to go ahead and pick up my brush with some um, clean water on it. And I'm going to take some of this blue out because I forgot I want to put this um, urn type of a thing. It's a big concrete container which on this particular beach, it's Hollywood Beach, Florida, and they use these big concrete containers as trash receptacles. And um, I like the way it looks, so I'm gonna put a couple of those in my painting. Uh, and I'm gonna just neaten this up a little bit, get a little bit of that blue that bled over into the uh, wall area. I'm not gonna really want that blue to be underneath the yellow I'm putting there, cause it'll darken it and I don't like that. So I'm just piddling a little while I wait for the paper to dry. As you can see, it has started warping up and buckling, and it's got a big buckle up across the top there. But you don't need to worry if your paper does that. I'm using Arches 140 pound paper, and uh, because I did tape it down, when it dries, that tape will help pull it back and it, it will dry flat, so it won't be all warped. Um, but I do need to let it dry so that I don't pick up the paint when I go to try to put the blue back in where uh, the, the water drip landed on it. So um, I think I'm going to put some more definition on the underneath side of my clouds because they're just not showing up enough. That shadow that I put on there has uh, softened it too much. Now it's kind of dried into oblivion. So I'm going to put some more and I'm going to use a second brush, one brush for applying the color and a second brush that's just damp with clean water and use that to soften the edges a little bit. 
and to soften it you just kind of rub just lightly maybe a little bouncing stippling type of a motion with that brush and uh, kind of soften and blend that darker color and make it look uh, like cotton clouds up there. I don't remember, I, I don't guess, no, there's not a bunch of clouds like this in my reference photo. A little bit, but not a bunch, but I like how this looks, and I've seen it like this on the beach there so many times. This is just how I see it in my head now. Okay, now let's um, get some of this blue color again. I want a nice strong bit of blue, and the paper is almost the whole way dry. So I'm going to uh, use the brush that is just damp with this paint, not sloppy wet. And then I'm dipping it into the water, but I'm not getting the paintbrush so full of water that it has a lot of water puddling on top of the page. It does not. And I'm just, I'm not getting any more paint. I'm just going back into the water so that by the time I'm down near the clouds, I'm just painting with clear water. And that will prevent me having a stark, color change or hard edges or anything like that. And I'm going to let that dry completely. Um, and here you go. You can see how it looks. It's dried flat and the paper's flat and the, I've got a nice color gradation on that blue and you can't see that spot where I dropped a, dr a droplet of water into it anymore. Now I'm switching right here for a minute to a different painting of the same subject because I've got a better view here and better able to show you how I get the color for my sand. I just usually just scoop up all kinds of whatever happens to be left over in my paint palette because sand is a, a mixture of different yellows and browns and there may be a bit of green in there. There's usually some lavender or violet in there and it, it's not consistent. That sand is not flat and smooth. It, it's got little dips in it from footprints and, and who knows what all. And so you just want a kind of a, a sloppy mix on there. But you do want to use a lot of water uh, on your brush so that you can brush this, these colors back and forth and loosen them up and spread them all over there and, and mix them until you get a nice good looking sand sort of color but without it being all one solid color. And don't forget we're going to put shadows all over the top of there uh, later when we're painting so don't stress yourself out about it and worry about it trying to get it too perfect. You, you don't need it to be perfect. You just need it to be sort of a sand color and um, have a little bit of variation for interest uh, and that that's really easy to do but do use plenty of water to rub your color back and forth so that you get a soft transition on those colors and uh, here we are back to the painting we're working on today and we're going to uh, jump in there and work on the lifeguard hut and I'm doing that with a very pale, pale yellow, which I get by taking my Aurelian yellow and adding a whole lot of water. Then I take some more of the paint with less water and mix it with a little bit of that messy stuff on my paint palette and get a nice shadow going underneath the roof there that I don't have painted yet. And now I'm just gonna get some more of the yellow paint without adding water, uh, to make it really light. I did add water, of course, but um, I just put a stronger mix of the paint down near the bottom of that wall. Um, now, um, unfortunately, as I was painting, I wasn't paying attention to my camera, just painting away, enjoying painting, and oops, my battery died while I kept painting. But I've got a clip from that same other painting that we were looking at a minute ago, so I can show you what I missed 
recording on the one we're working on today was basically just uh, showing you that I use burnt sienna or in some cases uh, transparent red oxide and I put it on the brush and then use the edge of the flat brush and just uh, touch the edges of that brush right down on there and make nice straight lines really easy that way. And uh, what I did here was just put the trim that's on the corners of this little building. And now I'm putting the, the legs or the struts or whatever it is you call those things underneath the structure there, the braces and whatnot. Uh, and then I'm gonna add a bit of Windsor Violet or Ultramarine Blue to that Burnt Sienna mix and touch some in in different places to indicate where it's a little bit darker, maybe it's in shadow, uh, but I just want to have some interest there and some variation so that it's not just one solid color stripe down the corners of the wall. And here we are back on the painting we're working on today. And you can see I just put those lines in basically that's all that I missed. Um, now I'm just going to look at the reference photo and using my um, red oxide or my burnt sienna um, put in details that I see and I've mixed some Windsor Violet again and a little tiny bit of ultramarine blue into that. Uh, I'm using red oxide here but you could use burnt sienna easily um, or whatever you happen to have that you can get a nice brown color. Um, anyway I mix a little bit of those other colors into it and darken it so that it looks good in the shadows underneath the structure and there's a uh, a base on it that also has some uh, shadow or, or darker areas on it and then I'm going to just go ahead and extend that ramp right down out into the sand using the same color and then I add a little tiny bit of, uh, of a more purpley like, um, like a quinacridone magenta or a Caroline Violet, add that in and purple it up just a little bit and then get the brush wet and put the flat of the brush against the paper and just kind of rub that diluted paint all over back and forth there to indicate the shadows from the structure and from the groupings of trees and also there's some buildings back behind there which you don't necessarily see but, but it creates a lot of long deep shadows because uh, we're uh, I'm, my reference photos from uh, late in the afternoon uh, probably late evening so the sun is low in the sky and the shadows are long it's really pretty that way and, and it makes the colors uh, get really heated up so that's why I put that extra yellow on the bottom of the wall uh, there and now I'm going to use the reference photo to look at where I want to place these braces and you just look at where one starts and then where it goes up to which like maybe if it starts at that center post and goes uh, up high to the corner at the outer post on the right hand side so you so you put one there and then you know just look at where they start and stop and it's really easy do one at a time and it doesn't have to be complicated and use the edge of your brush to just touch it on the paper there and you get nice pretty straight lines and um, there you go it looks gorgeous and it was easy now I'm going to actually take a little bit of indigo on my brush and put in a few more shadows and uh, darken them here and there uh, just to, and whoops, that's a little bit too much right on that one post, so let me dry my paintbrush off and then lift some of that right back off there, easy peasy. You don't have to feel like, oh, I messed it up because you can actually lift paint back up as well as put you can put paint on but you can also take it back up with your paintbrush um, so just keep looking at it and putting in details uh, I, I get lost in this part I enjoy it and I just paint and paint and paint and kind of forget the time it, it's fun to me if you get to a point where you're 
you think you got enough details on there, then you probably do. You can be done with it. Uh, if you want to keep putting more details, put however many want in that you like. Now I'm uh, looking at my reference photo and checking where the point on the top of that roof was in relation to the uh, the trim, the brown burnt sienna trim that we put on on the corners. That helps you know where to position the uh, peak of the roof and the part on the left side I've made a little tiny bit greener um, so that it just indicates that it is facing away from the sun and um, now I've got a little tiny bit of gray on my brush and I'm putting a little tiny bit of lines just to further define that roof and then with my brush wet I will soften it back out so that I don't have any drastic um, you know really glaring obvious black lines there because I don't want that now I'm gonna just use that same color and put in the window on the side and then put in a little tiny bit more of that definition on the roof because I think I softened it too much and I want to deepen the shadow under the roof there um, I really want to play up the deep shadows in the late afternoon uh, late uh, you know, evening like right before uh, dusk so the shadows will be long and deep and uh, the some of the color on the side of the wall there will be really warm so I'm gonna um, punch that up a little bit too and put more shadow on this side of the building that is away from the sun and I'm leaving a couple of kind of whitish spots where there are signs on the lifeguard hut you know saying what the meaning of the caution flags is and different things like that that they have water conditions and whatnot that they write on there so I'm, I'm leaving those blank and now right now I am attempting to lift out paint and create the flagpole and it's not working as good as I would like it to be so what I'm gonna do is get some more of that gray color on my brush and I'm gonna put like a shadow on the left side of the flagpole that I tried to lift out um, so I'm not actually painting a, uh, a stripe of a flagpole there but I did put something that will give the indication of it and now I'm also going to lift out paint a little bit around this window and create the window frame and I got one of my lines a little crooked but I'm going to put more shadow up here at the top there and, and uh, that won't won't be so obvious that looks pretty good I could I could tweak this all day long but I'm gonna go ahead and paint the flag on here and I've got, just got my paint brush full of a really good strong mix of well it's just um, Aurelian yellow and I put the brush on the place where I want it to go on the paper and just wiggled it back and forth and that kind of like disturbed a little of the uh, burnt sienna or the, uh, the paint beneath it uh, to make it look like there's a flag waving around back and forth in front of that corner and so um, yeah, it, it, it looks good like that. Um, I can use a clean wet damp brush not wet but clean damp brush to pick paint back up from where I didn't want it and I am going to make that purple just trail right up into that yellow just a little bit while the yellow is still damp enough that the purple will soften into it and it will look really really nice and I'm going to use a little bit of the Windsor Violet and a little bit more indigo and put some more uh, dark shadow lines where they are on the sides uh, of the building that are away from the sun just to give a little bit more definition to it because I like it like that and also I'm gonna play with it for probably longer than some I, I truly am a detail person and so that's why I paint these kind of things Now I'm going to um, run some more color down 
while I had it on my brush down into those shadows. And I've got some, some of my lavenderish color that I put a little bit of a greenish into it and a, a little tiny bit of the burnt sienna. Um, and I made a shadow color here for the shadow that the flagpole is casting on the building. And that's how that looks. Now I did go ahead and uh, do some of the palm trees because, um, and, and not included here because my video is getting too long, but all I really did is like you can see on this one right here, I just used my flat angle brush and basically just draw a line. I, I used a lavender with some green in it and put the initial um, stripe of the of the trunk on there or you know just paint the trunk with that light color and then while it is still damp I darkened up my puddle of paint with some Windsor Violet and a little tiny bit of indigo and then I used that to go down uh, the left side of the trunk, which would be the side away from the sun, to put a dark thing on there that will, because it's still uh, damp, it'll kind of soften on its own and run together and make, the, make this look like a contoured uh, round tree trunk. And that is a, a super easy thing to do. Then if you want, you can pick up some uh, red oxide or some more violet or whatever you might feel that you need and dab some in here and there to uh, give it good color and, and good interest. And then you're ready to move on to the next thing which is gonna be, we're gonna do the palm fronds now, and they are super easy. Um, what I'm gonna show you is I've got a, a really weak mix of green. Uh, I'm going to use a couple different colors, um, but I'm gonna use a weak mixture of them to put on some palm fronds, which will end up being the fronds that are kind of on the back side of the tree that is away from us and then we'll put more on and we'll just build this up uh, like a, a leaf at a time but it's not a leaf it's a palm frond um, so the way you do it uh, let me just show you the stroke here I'm using an angle brush and you just kind of make a make that center part and then you put the brush against that center and flick it outward and there you go you've got palm fronds and it is really easy to do uh, practice it well play and paint and I don't like to say practice really um, play with your paints and have fun with this and you get better at it with with time after you've done it um, enough you get the hang of it and you just get that flick in, in your wrist with the flat brush or the flat angle brush, whichever one works better for you. And it, it gets really easy to get the right shape. Then you just have to worry about making sure that you've got light, a weak mixture. I'm not saying light meaning like I've got some yellow leaves and some dark green and some dark blue leaves. That's not really what I mean. I'm talking about I've got a really weak mixture for uh, several palm fronds that are going to be the ones all the way in the back and uh, then I uh, add more pigment and get the my little puddle of paint is not quite as weak anymore and I paint some fronds on with that paint and then I'll just steadily keep putting more palm fronds in there and uh, increasing the, the pigment in my paint puddle so that my paint gets a little bit stronger and a little bit stronger. Now I am adding some uh, violet into my transparent red oxide and making a, a nice good color mix to put some of that color in my palm trees. I always do that. I think it really adds uh, something to the way they look to go ahead and put some of those purples and browns in there and not just make it strictly green and yellow 
or three different shades of green. Um, go ahead and put some dark blue in there, put some uh, purple in, put some brown fronds in there, and uh, put that little clump at the top of your, your trunk uh, where they're all coming out from up at the top. And just look at your reference photo and that makes it pretty easy. And uh, don't forget, add more pigment to your puddle so that your paint is getting stronger as you're adding more palm fronds and as you're building up your tree. Now here I took some of my bright yellow on my brush and I just kind of laid some of that on there and I want that to dry just like it is. That paint has a kind of a higher opacity, so it will, as long as I don't uh, forget what I'm doing and paint over it, it will dry really nicely right there and, and make the appearance of some of those really bright spring green, almost yellow uh, fronds that, that I wanna have in there. So I'm gonna be a little bit careful not to paint over that yellow as I'm finishing these up here. And also I'm starting to use the edge of the brush uh, to, to put fronds in, in a different method, almost more like you would do if you were using a pencil, uh, drawing each leaf on the frond because I want more definition on the fronds that are meant to appear that they're on this this side of the trees that the side that is toward us so you don't want that much definition on the first front that you put on in the back and then you do want it on the ones in the front and you just keep working on it until you're happy with it and I think I'm happy with those Now let's put some more shading. Um, I'm gonna shade this, this little concrete container back here that's for trash. And then I'm going to put a bit more, well, let me just get that. I wanna make it have shadows on there and the shading so that it appears round. So I'm putting the contour shadows on. Then I'm going to go ahead and put some more shadows into the sand. Remember this sand is lumpy. It's not a flat smooth surface so you don't need to make like a mirror image of these trees onto the sand. You're, you're not going to get that um, and so it looks better if you just kind of messily um, put some paint on there and give it the general impression of the shadow of the palm tree instead of trying to be really perfect with it. It's, it's actually going to look uh, prettier if you don't do that. And, and it, it wouldn't look like that in, in the, uh, if, if it was exactly like this in the reference photo, you wouldn't see a perfect shadow because the sand is lumpy from all the people running through it, and dragging their beach umbrellas through it, and chasing their dogs through it, and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, don't stress over exactly getting your, your tree shadows exactly right. You don't need to. Just put use pretty colors and the flat of your brush and just kind of scrub them onto the paper. And Do however much you, th you think looks good and quit when you think you're done. And also, if you get frustrated with it, just put your brush down and walk away for a little bit. Maybe even come back the next day when you're not frustrated and look at it again and you'll be looking at it with fresh eyes. You'll probably be really surprised how pretty it looks. Um, and then you'll be fresh and you'll be ready to work on it some more. Now, um, Let's put the ocean in now. I've got a mix of ultramarine blue and indigo, and it's really dark. And I'm gonna use the flat edge of this flat brush and just lay down that horizon line there and keep it really dark right back at the horizon line. And then I'm gonna add more ultramarine blue to my puddle and more water 
and spread some of that on there. And I'm not really painting it on there, I'm spreading it on there. It's almost like I'm scrubbing it on. And then I use just the corner, the tip of the corner to touch the paint in between the, the braces under my little lifeguard hut and leave some white spaces because those are going to represent the cresting waves out there. So you don't want to just paint it solid, leave some white showing and then add some water. I also added a bit of the um, cobalt turquoise to the mix as I am getting closer to the shore and uh, also add water to weaken that paint so that it looks lighter and it appears to be coming closer to us um, that way. It'll, it'll get lighter and greener and that's how it looks as, it's, as the waves are coming up onto the sand. Now we're gonna take some water and just kind of loosen some of that and bring it more out onto the sand. And this will look like um, the waves have washed up onto the sand and then receded and left wet sand. And also we're gonna put some lavender in there after I clean the blue that I got off. I need to clean the blue off these tree trunks. Um, now, um, put water here and spread that out and then we're going to get some lavender and put it in there and make it look like uh, wet sand and lavender is the color that you can use to do that you can also use some of your dark puddle of color and the edge of your flat brush and put shadows under some of those cresting waves and then you can even put some lines back in the distance it to indicate swells that are not cresting but, but where the waves or swells are happening out there and uh, just go ahead and put detail until you think you've got enough on there and got the picture where you like it and then you can step back and have a look and see if there's anything else you see that you might want to add and I'm thinking I'm going to add a little tiny bit more of dark color in my uh, shadow area right in front of the trees right beside the lifeguard hut and um, I think that's all that I want to put on there. It's the last, the only thing I see right now. Just put just a little bit more color right in here. more water on it don't want to do that again so um, I think let's go ahead and get the tape off of it I think it looks finished and then I think the only thing left lacking now is um, I'm gonna sign it don't forget to sign yours and if you want if you're up to it um, take a picture and uh, show me your work that you've created. I love to see it. You can either put it on my uh, Facebook page, which there's a link in my comments down below. You can find out how to get to my Facebook page and, uh, and show me your picture. Um, and make some comments below if you have questions or anything you want to know about or suggest that we paint. Um, and I really uh, appreciate you watching Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun painting. And um, if you did, if you could give me a thumbs up, I appreciate that. And if you have not already subscribed, I would love to have you subscribe. I, I, that helps me a whole lot. And you'll get notified when I post more painting videos. Um, let's see, let me get my pen out here signature on and again 
I really appreciate you watching. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you'll come again next time. Have an awesome day.